Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video, we're doing a review of the Mr. Golden Era competition just held by Nick Strength and Power. If you follow my channel, I'm sure you know who Nick is. Nick Strength and Power is the top bodybuilding news channel in the world. And Mr. Golden Era competition is online competition, and it is not about who is the best bodybuilder, nor it is about who is the best physique competitor, classic physique competitor. It is about who has the most classic physique, because classic physique in the IIBB doesn't necessarily mean the most classic physique, but it is debatable what classic actually means, but I'm sure all of you know, when you see a classic physique, you know it is a classic physique. So Mr. Golden Era is supposed to be a little bit different. It is about who has the Golden Era physique, whose physique resembles the most Golden Era bodybuilders. Not who has the smallest waist or who has the best conditioning, or anything like that, I think Nick's idea for this competition was to have a physique that resembles golden era of bodybuilding the most. That was the, the idea, but his part is just choosing the top five. People are voting and choosing the winner. So it's really about the people, whatever people think is the most classic or the most golden physique. Now, here you can see that uh, the competition is pretty much over. The competitor letter E won the thing, now, this guy is from Croatia, which is a neighboring country of mine. I did not want to make a video before, because uh, it would definitely influence the voting. Because it's only 25,000 votes, which is not much. My voting polls have 10,000 votes sometimes. So, and I, my videos get, you know, at least 10,000 uh, views. So, it would influence at least a little bit. But this victory is pretty decisive. I mean, this guy got almost half of, of the votes. His name is uh, Filip Dropolic. So it's definitely gonna be trouble for Nick to pronounce his name once the competition is officially over, but uh, it's over, it's over. Nobody can uh, overtake him at this point, 40%. The next one is competitor letter B, who is last year's uh, Mr. Golden Era winner. Competitor letter C was also pretty good, but uh, A and D uh, shouldn't have even been here, in my opinion. So uh, the winner was uh, Filip Dropolic. And yeah, it's not an easy name to pronounce. I mean, the name is Philip. That's that's easy. But Dropolich, that's gonna be a trouble for Americans to to pronounce. Maybe he should have came up with some kind of a nickname. Winning this show is definitely gonna be a big influence if he uses it smartly. I hope he will. I hope he will. But uh, just once again, guys, try to remember his name, Philip Dropolich. Anyways, now let's go with the competitors. Let's actually review the competitors. And uh, here you can see the competitor letter A, the first one. Very tiny waist, big arms. But it reminds me too much of an of a open bodybuilder, of somebody like Ronnie Coleman or something when he was younger. So not exactly golden era uh, quality. I, I don't know why this guy is even here because, I mean, look at his arms. This is just too big. It kind of even looks like it's in, <laughs> literally. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's not because uh, this guy just probably has great genetics. But it doesn't look like Mr. Golden Era. It could look a little bit like Sergio Olivia because that guy had huge arms, but the conditioning is not there, and there is a, a really good ass crack, <laughs> so that wasn't exactly very professional, but it is what it is. He's not very conditioned, though, because that is not exactly what is uh, Mr. Golden Era about, you know. It's not about the conditioning exactly, because the guys from the 70s and the 60s didn't really have the best conditioning, but uh, to show up like this in any competition today, it's really just below the standards, because what are the standards today? You can get better than this. If the guys from the 60s and the 70s could have gotten more shredded and uh, remained their muscle, they would have done that. They just were the best that they could be. And they would look better if they were more conditioned. So the, the reason why they look the way they looked is because basically genetics, uh, lack of certain drugs, and uh, the training. They trained really hard. So just, you know, coming not conditioned, like with this kind of stomach and with this kind of glutes, and showing your ass crack uh, is not going to help you in this kind of competition. So definitely he should have came a little bit more conditioned. But those arms are definitely uh, Sergio Olivia-like. Because those biceps are huge. The triceps are also enormous. Um, great potential for bodybuilding. But for Mr. Golden Era, obviously he's not going to win it. He's not even close to winning it. So I'm not really a huge fan of this physique in this competition. If he wants to do good in bodybuilding, his legs need to come up uh, and calves should be bigger. Uh, this is very good, the crucifixion pose. Um, his arms are good, and you need to have big arms for crucifix pose. And the same thing goes with victory pose. Sergio Oliva's uh, signature pose was uh, victory pose, so he was doing it very efficiently because of his arms, basically, and the small waist, which this guy absolutely has. 
Look at the stomach right here. It's fat. It's fat. A lot of fat on the stomach. So you're not going to win any kind of competition with fat on your stomach, dude. But uh, he, he reminds me of a combination of Sergio Oliva and Victor Richards, maybe. Anyways, we come to the competitor letter B, last year's winner. I'm sure you all saw this guy before. He's a gracious poser. This posing is really good. And he has an amazing vacuum. But uh, what I don't like about his physique is that he's really short. So, I mean, that's okay, that's not really that bad, it doesn't really make you not classic or not the golden era type of bodybuilder if you're short. There were some short guys back then, but the tall guys really dominated the stage. And when you're taller, your presence is more dominant. So, uh, I'm not a huge fan of short bodybuilders uh, overall, not just this competition. And uh, yeah, he was conditioned, he has pretty classic physique, very complete. Um, just he's a little bit too short and also there is another thing I mean if you know about this guy he's actually saying that he's natural so this definitely throws people away from voting for him because I mean the people are voting here and if somebody is lying to them in straight to their faces people are not gonna vote for him I think that was a wrong move uh, to lie to people about being natural so whatever I mean he did that and that's why that's probably one of the reasons why people didn't vote for him it's only 25,000 uh, votes so it's really easy to manipulate the voting and I'm sure that the winner actually he had a lot of people from around here from Balkans voting for him so it definitely does have an impact if you have a strong fan base anyways let's go to the competitor letter C and I really like this guy reminds me of Arnold obviously a lot the presentation was very very nice done look at the background look at the quality of the, of the video so this guy really tried hard and look at this, another Arnold's pose. Very, very aesthetic. Very Arnold-like. He really resembles Arnold with his physique. Probably more than anybody I've seen so far. He has those small shoulders, big arms, big chest, small legs, a little bit wider waist. But that's Arnold. That's who Arnold was. Now, this is not the Arnold Schwarzenegger competition. But uh, it's, a, it's a golden era competition. And the guy who represented that era was uh, Arnold. So you would definitely, in my opinion, have to choose between him and the winner. But uh, you will actually see right now why the winner won. I mean, you don't really see the winner yet, but uh, here you can see the legs of this guy. I mean, his legs are like... This guy never worked legs in his life, probably. Especially not the hamstrings and the glutes and the calves. I mean, I'm sure he has, but it looks like he didn't. He definitely does keep leg days. So, not really complete physique. And this last part doesn't look that good. A lot of weaknesses, a lot of uh, voids in his physique, a lot of flaws. And that's probably why uh, he didn't win or he didn't get more votes for him. Definitely a lot of negative points, but a lot of positive ones because he definitely looks like somebody who competed back in the 60s or the 70s. This guy looks like exactly like that. He has the same posing trunks and he has the face for it, the hair and everything. This guy definitely shouldn't have even bothered to, to show up. And this guy is huge. This guy wouldn't fit in classic physique. Uh, let alone golden era, I mean, look at him, he's huge. Great bodybuilder though, but I think I can just skip this one. I mean, look at his legs, his quads are vascular as hell. I mean, he has veins all over his quads, all over his legs. Is that classic? Is that how golden era used to like? <laughs> nothing like this, nothing like this. I don't know why this guy bother, but apparently he's gonna get some kind of, of money, and you can see him right here. So cracking the top 5 with this kind of competition is definitely going to help him. Now this guy has great beautiful uh, bustle bellies, for sure. But uh, not for this kind of competition. In bodybuilding, this will definitely affect his placings. These beautiful muscle bellies will definitely make him look uh, better and stand out on the stage. But uh, this is definitely not uh, Golden Era, uh, Mr. Golden Era material. No, no, no not by any means. The, he, this guy is too huge. This guy is great for bodybuilding, he's gonna do great in the open category. Or Tooth Felt, I don't know how, how tall he is, but uh, definitely not uh, classic physique or Mr. Golden Era competition material. So let's just rewind this video, let's uh, play it a little bit faster because I don't know what else to say, honestly. He's great, he has great muscle bellies and everything, but for Golden Era, no, no. And now let's go with uh, our winner, once again, Filip Dropulic, try to remember his name, uh, a fellow Croatian. I'm not Croatian, I'm Serbian, but uh, it was the same country uh, not so long ago. But we got separated and we speak pretty much the same language, a little bit different. So, I mean, we are all the same people, pretty much, if you ask me. Some would maybe disagree, but it doesn't matter. Here you can see his physique. 
this guy absolutely deserved this victory. Um, uh, I commented on his video actually before he was in the top five. I saw it and I was like, this guy is going to be definitely one of the, the, the top contenders. I had no idea who else is competing, so I couldn't, you know, know that he's going to actually win it. But I was definitely pleasantly surprised when I saw uh, that he's actually taking this competition, taking home all that money and uh, not really a lot of money. I think it was 2500, right? It's not 20,000, right? 2,500, if I'm not mistaken. So definitely a lot less than we expected to be. Correct me if I'm wrong about this information, I'm not sure. Uh, here you can see, yeah, he has a great back. He has very complete physique. He was very conditioned. And um, very aesthetic physique overall. I mean, small waist, great muscle bellies, not too big, not too small. He's actually competing in classic physique division. And uh, I'm sure in a couple of years, he will probably become a pro. Right now, I don't think he is. And um, here you can see, he has a, a pretty classic physique, especially through some poses like this, side chest, very good pose for him. I'm not sure how tall he is. He doesn't seem very tall. Uh, pretty good arms. Right here, you can see in the side tricep. He really slams that arm to his torso and it looks even bigger than he actually is. Here, you can see that this pose doesn't look as good as the competitor that resembled Arnold, but uh, he has the legs. He has, uh, he has legs. So because of that, it was definitely between uh, the last year's winner and uh, this guy right here, Filip Dropolic. The combination of his posing, lines and conditioning was the best for this show and that's why he won. That's why he won. I don't think anybody can actually overtake the competition because, uh, yeah, I mean, he's leading pretty decisively, 40%. Anyways, if you want to check him out, this is his Instagram. His name is Filip Dropolic once again, but I'm sure most of you will pronounce his last name Dropolik. He should have probably changed it to something like Filip Drop. Just that would be probably easier for people to remember, but it doesn't matter. He's getting the money away and uh, definitely a big advertising for him, at least here on Balkans. I don't know if that's going to work uh, in the world, but uh, here he's definitely making a name for himself. I don't know. I didn't know about him before. Now I know about him. So definitely making a big name. As you can see, he's a classic physique competitor. It's going to be interesting seeing him progress and make an impact on the bodybuilding industry. Hopefully, he has the potential to actually become a pro. So once again, Philip Dropolich or Dropolik or just Philip Drop. I'm watching this show and I'm thinking, how would I do if I competed? Well, I don't know. I guess we won't find out. I think I'd, I will do good, but I don't know if I would beat this guy. I don't know, man. I think Nick should move the, the date of this show a little bit earlier because nobody wants to go through diet just to do an online show. We compete in bodybuilding because we are addicted to the stage, to competing, actually. Just making a video and posting it online is definitely going to be great. Uh, it's going to give you money and it's going to make your business grow, but no thrill of standing on the stage and competing in bodybuilding, actually, which is probably why everybody is doing it. Nobody does this for fame or for the money. We do it because we love it. So once again, guys, this is your uh, winner, most likely. I mean, it's not Dover, but uh, he has 40% of the votes. Unless somebody makes a bunch of fake accounts or hires uh, a company in India that do that, uh, nothing is going to change. This guy's going to win the show. Actually, that's a, that's a big call in these online competitions because uh, you're winning a lot if you win uh, Mr. Golden Air competition. This is Nick Strength and Power, almost a million subscribers, a top news bodybuilding channel. So if you make uh, if you make it here, you make your name big. If you can take advantage of it, so hopefully Philip will take advantage of this. Hopefully he will make a YouTube channel, you know, be more active on social media or something, you know, make videos in English language. I'm sure he will make a great impact on the Balkan industry, bodybuilding industry over here. But if he wants to make an impact on the world's bodybuilding industry or, you know, just classic physique competitor to be a good one, uh, he should make videos in English language. Of course, I don't know if he speaks it at all. But uh, anyways, great classic physique. Uh, I'm happy with the result. Uh, I don't think anybody else deserved it more than this guy. So once again, guys, thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe for more bodybuilding videos like this. Make sure to remember this guy's name, Filip Dropolic, and uh, all the best, guys. Bye-bye.